Warren Buffett is considered the goat of stock investing, and when Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway buy and sell stocks, the entire financial world is watching and learning. For the first time in years, Warren Buffett did not add any brand new positions or fully liquidate any existing positions in the fourth quarter. But Warren did make massive changes to his portfolio and sold billions. Let's cover what he sold. Warren slashed most of his ownership in three companies. Number one, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing. He reduced that by 86.19%. Number two, U.S. Bank. He liquidated 91.42%. And number three, for Bank of New York Mellon, he dropped 59.7%. Those are some massive reductions, but he wasn't done. He also reduced his ownership in five other companies. Activision Blizzard, 12.35%. Chevron, he trimmed by 1.44%. McKesson Corporation, he reduced by 10.72%. And he dropped very small amounts of Ally Financial and Kroger. Before we cover the three stocks Warren Buffett was buying at the end of 2022, here are a few of our winning trades. And in addition to these winning trades, in Wednesday's video, I gave away two trades that I was going to make on Wednesday. I did make those trades and they are up 17 and 66% and I hope to close them today for 100% profits. This is what we do in my private discord and if you want all of our trading alerts and help from our awesome community, then join us in discord. I really believe we've got one of the best discords out there and you can see the results. If you want to join, I'll put the link in the description down below. Next up, Warren Buffett only added three stocks in the fourth quarter, and that speaks volumes for what he likes in the current market. He added 21.55% of Louisiana Pacific, 2.65% of Paramount Global, and 0.04% of his largest holding, which is Apple. So today, we're going to do a quick side-by-side -side fundamental analysis on his three purchases, plus I've added his other top holdings, which are Bank of America, Chevron, and Coca-Cola, so we can see what types of stocks Warren likes for 2023. All right, we're now at beastmodeanalysis.com, and our first three stocks are Apple, Louisiana Pacific, and Paramount Global, and these are what he bought in the fourth quarter, and the next three are his three largest holdings behind Apple, and that's going to be Bank of America, Chevron, and Coca-Cola. The first thing that we notice is the P.E. ratio, and all of these P.E. ratios are pretty low. We've got Coca-Cola coming in as the highest at 60, and then we've got Apple at 25.5, and then everything else is 10 or below. Now, I really believe that fundamental analysis is easy when you break it down into sections. So our first section is going to be the income statement, and this tells us whether or not companies are making money, and this is critically important for guys like Warren Buffett or actually all investors because it tells us about their operating margin and their net income margin. Now I break mine down by colors where light blue is the most important and light green is the second most important for that section and then we can also see I've got a cheat sheet here with an up arrow so this just tells us that we're looking for 10% or more for our long time buying. Now if you need to know what anything means on the spreadsheet all you do is hover over an I and a pop-up comes up. So here we know operating profit is the total earnings from the core business functions for a given period excluding the deduction of interest and taxes. So this will actually teach you fundamental analysis and each of the different things that we're looking for. So if we start with the operating margin, we can see Apple is coming in at 30.28%, LPX 40%, Para 14%. Now Bank of America, we've got no value here and that's because they're not required to report this section for their quarterly reports, but we'll see them at net income margin in just a second. We've got Chevron coming in at 16.82% and then Coca-Cola at 28.55%. Next up, we've got the net income margin, and here our winner on the day is going to be LPX at 30.24, and what I notice here is strong profit margins for all of these companies. We've got Apple, 25.3%, Bank of America, 29%, Coca-Cola, 25.27%, and then Para and Chevron coming in at 15%. Next up, let's scroll on down and look at the balance sheet. And this tells us how financially stable the companies are. And what we're looking to do here is just to simply compare the assets to the liabilities. And we always want them to have more assets than liabilities. And we create what I call the tattle ratio. So we can see our strongest one on the day is going to be Louisiana Pacific. And that's because they've got $2.194 billion in assets and their liabilities are 955. And that gives them a tattle ratio of 2.3. So we always want that number 
above one. And we can see that uh, Chevron is right at that ratio. That's really interesting. A little bit of a red flag here. I'd like to see them have a lot more assets than liabilities. And then the other guys, they're all coming in pretty much normal. Uh, bank of America, they're a bank, so it's rare that you have a very big tattle ratio at all. Normally, it's going to be right around that 1.1 figure, so perfectly normal. Next up, we want to look at the key performance metrics, and these are all very insightful to the company's overall condition. And you'll notice all of these are highlighted in light blue, and that's because I think it's very, very important. So let's start with the first one. We've got the revenue growth for last year. LPX was on fire at 63.3%, and we can see everybody here was growing their revenue, which is quite impressive. Chevron, they're in the oil and energy sector, so they were the best, 51.48%. Next up, we've got the free cash flow margin, and this is something that I always like to look at. And free cash flow measures a company's ability to expand its business and pay returns to shareholders using only the money generated through current operations. This means they've got enough money coming in to pay the bills and grow the business. So our winner on the day here is gonna be good old fashioned Coca-Cola at 29.4%. Coming in at number two, we've got Apple at 28.26%. So even though Apple's revenue growth has been a little bit slow, we can still see they've got a lot of free cash flow margin Margin, and that gives them a lot of options. They can do share buybacks. Uh, they can expand their business. They've got money to invest. Good cash flow, critical. Louisiana Pacific, same thing here, 27.01%. And then we've got some lower ones. Uh, Paramount Global, they're at 2.09%. So they're getting by, but pretty, pretty much on the skinny there. We've got Bank of America, they're flat. And then Chevron, 15.95%. The rule of 40 indicator, this is one of my favorite things to look at. I'll pop that up so you can read it while we go through them here. But we can see Apple is at 36.05, quite impressive. LPX, extremely strong at 90.31%. Para, 15%. Bank of America, 6.5%. CVX, 67%. And Coca-Cola, wow, that's impressive for a good old fashioned uh, dividend aristocrat like Coca-Cola. They're coming in at 46.48%. Next up, we've got the FNR indicator, and this is just a down and dirty indicator where we simply sum up the free cash flow, the net income margin, and the revenue growth over the last 12 months. The bigger that number, the better. And here we can see we've got a clear cut winner, LPX at 120.55%. Everybody though is actually coming in really strong. Our weakest one on the day is gonna be Paramount Global. And then our last one is the book value ratio. And it's really rare to be able to buy a stock underneath the book value. And anytime our value is over one, that should be sending out a really big green light for us. And this gets me excited about Paramount Global because we can see it's coming in at 1.49. So let's go ahead and scroll up and we can see Paramount Global last traded at 23.50. And then we're gonna come down and we wanna find our book value. We can see it's currently 3507. So that's a pretty big discrepancy. And that gets me excited because anytime you can buy a stock below the book value, that's value investing. So this is definitely one that I'm gonna take a bigger look at later on today. Our next section is management effectiveness, and this tells us how well management is generating returns for investors. So everybody loves to look at return on equity, and this is actually my second most favorite. And if we look at that, Apple is coming in as a clear-cut winner at 175.4%. Again, this is Warren's biggest holding and probably one of his favorite stocks. LPX, no slouch, they're coming in at 110.9%. And then we've got Coca-Cola at 42%. So here we've got uh, three really big stocks that he likes. After that, everybody is coming in at okay numbers. We've got Paramount Global 23.3%, Bank of America 10.1%, and I expect that to go up with these rising interest rates. And we've got Chevron at 23.6%. Then the other thing that I really like to look at is the 5R indicator. And this simply sums up our five different return ons and is another down and dirty indicator that we use. And here we're looking for the highest value and that's just going to point us in the right direction. So we've got LPX coming in at 464.4. We've got Apple at number two at 363.1. And number three is Coca-Cola. And the more you study the fundamentals, the more certain things jump out. And there's really no surprise when I see this when I'm looking at Warren Buffett stocks. And the next section we want to cover is going to be the growth metrics. Companies should be consistently growing their business. And for that, I love to look at the net income growth. We can see LPX is our winner here at 
percent. We're also very strong on Chevron at 127 percent, although I expect that number to go down. Uh, the energy crisis prices should start to come down pretty soon. And then we've got Paramount Global very strong at 87.6 percent. And then our one red flag on the day was Bank of America. They actually had a negative 13.9 percent for revenue growth last year. Warren Buffett is the GOAT for a reason, and the big takeaway today is to look at what type of companies Warren is buying and holding for 2023. All of these companies have great net profit margins, and only Bank of America did not grow their income last year. Fundamentals matter, and that's why my focus is on Warren Buffett types of stocks that are highly profitable and growing their revenues for my long-term investing. As always, have a phenomenal rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, grab your free stocks, and don't forget to try my indicators for absolutely free. The links are down below and my trade alerts are in my Discord. Thank you so much for watching and I'd love to see you back here on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'll see you soon. Peace.